Yeah, really good. I mean, I can mainly speak for myself, but I think we're up and about. Um, that opening match against England was an absolute cracker, and I think that's more of what we expected from them, to be honest. And and we knew that the Ashes was was done and dusted, and they're a different team come a World Cup tournament. So um, they really brought what we knew they could bring, and that ended up being a firecracker of of a start of a tournament for us. And to only win by 12 runs, defending 310, it kind of it showed um, the pitches that they're intending for this World Cup for a high-scoring World Cup, and also showed that their intent, what they can bring. So. Um, obviously a bit more of a clinical performance against Pakistan, but that's, um, you know, what we were going out there to, to do. So I think for us, you know, trying to increase that run rate where we can and, and try and cement a better finals position is, is always going to be the key against, I guess, the, um, the, the, the games that we might win a little bit easier. Um, a bit up and down, if I'm honest. Um, hasn't quite been the swing that I thought I would get down here in, in Kiwi land, but um, for me, that just makes me work on my game a little bit harder for when it's not swinging. So that's for me, you know, the opening 10 overs is where I love, love to bowl. Um, and when the ball's not swinging, it's a real adaption for me and, and a real challenge. So I guess against batters that are coming hard, like the game against England, um, that was always going to be a really good challenge. And I actually really enjoy that. I mean, when, when players can play me out pretty easily, I don't quite have that pace, obviously, to, to blast through them. So if they're not coming at me, I'm probably not going to take wickets. So um, when they're coming hard is, is when I bowl my best. And I assume that's what um, New Zealand are going to bring. try to um, whether they listen to me or not is their choice <laughs> um, obviously I I do things a bit differently um, being an in-swinger where there aren't as many of us around the world but I, I like to think I've got a pretty good perspective and I've played a lot of cricket um, to have a good mental state on the game so um, at the moment there's a lot of talk around death bowling in amongst our group and um, sometimes it's throwing random ideas out there but honestly I think a lot of it is just reassurance um, I know when I was younger coming through that I just needed someone to tell me that I'm bowling well and and tell me that what I do is is what makes me me so um, that's what I try and do with our younger ones and honestly a lot of them don't need that um, they are so mentally switched on and have come up from a strong domestic environment that um, really all we can talk is tactics because they're already kind of set in their own way which is it's brilliant and I, I took a long time to gain that so to see them do that from a young age is really cool well, i can't give him your tactics just in case sophie divine is watching that but that isn't the first time i've been sophie divine in my life um <laughs> she was she was on one that game and when she's doing that there's honestly not a whole lot you can do to stop it and um someone that powerful is is just so unique to the game and I don't want to float her boat too much, but um, she's incredible to watch at full flight. So um, hopefully she doesn't do that against us on Sunday, but um, kind of special to watch a friend be able to do that as well. But um, it's a new wicket at Wellington. Um, both teams obviously haven't played on it yet. And uh, if they're anything like the Nets were today, there might be a bit of swing, which would be awesome. Um, you know, hoping that Megan can finally win a toss and, and we can bowl first because that's <laughs> where I'm licking my lips. Hopefully a bit, a bit of movement in the morning, but um, they're a team that we play a lot. Um, pretty similar lineup. We know what 11 they're probably going to come out with and it's just making sure that we have our plan set in place for the conditions and we know that Wellington is going to be a strong breeze. What way that's going, we obviously don't know yet and we can only assume how the pitch is going to be. So um, it's about making sure that we have our plans A, B and C in place and obviously um, having plans for someone like Sophie if she's going off again but other than that they're yeah as I said a team that we play a lot and I guess it's just who shows up better on the day. Uh, I think you guess it if we want to be holding that trophy um, come April 4th but uh, look for us there's a lot of talk around the 2017 World Cup and our exit from that and how that changed us as a team. We we evolved and it ended up leading to, you know, consecutive ODI wins. Um, so for us, it's kind of redemption, I guess. And I know that is personally for me. Um, I was a very different bowler back in 2017. I, I didn't have a lot of backup plans and I think that's what's changed the most. And we're all aware of that as a team. That's it's not just bowlers, it's batters. You know, everyone has different plans for different conditions and different teams. And 
that's what we expect to bring in this tournament, I guess. And every team is going to have their games where they just absolutely have a blast. And we know that teams are going to come hard against us. We, at the end of the day, we're the favourites to win and we're the hunted. And we know that and we kind of like being at the top there. And we know that we have to bring our best game every game in order to do this. So I think, you know, everyone's going to have the same answer in, in wanting to hold that World Cup. It's uh, the only trophy we don't have in the shed at the moment. And for me personally, at the start, I wanted to be the leading wicket taker. But I think realistically, if I'm just doing my job at the other end and a lot of the time that's just being economical and letting Darcy or Pez or Talia do their thing at the other end, take the wicket hits, that's, that's what I'm happy doing. I'm, I'll probably do that at Big Bash anyways. <laughs> Let them work their magic and, and I'll annoy them at the other end without them scoring. So yeah, for me, it's making sure that I'm executing the plans that I want to. Uh, it's been very different. I'll, I'll admit my my game prep is very different to what it used to be. Um, a good night's sleep is really all I dream for at the moment. Um, I wouldn't change any of it, but it, it, it really is a different environment. Um, I think a lot of it, I mean, we'll talk about lack of sleep with babies and, and that truly is what affects your moods the most. Um, it affects your energy levels. So. For me, it's just making sure that I try and get a good night's rest in the night before, but um, it, it does, it changes your perspective on life a bit, you know, and, and suddenly cricket, you know, it is important, it is my job and it's what I love doing, but there's also my wife and child to come home to and yeah, that changes everything. I, I guess, you know, for me, I'm starting to reflect on a bit more about life outside of cricket and obviously having a child now changes that. So yeah, look, it's, it's incredible. Uh, tour life is very, very different. Um, everything is based around Riley's feeds and naps now, which, you know, is fine when it's at home, but um, in an ever-changing structure of a World Cup and travel and training times always changing, it's, um, it's, it's different and it's difficult times, but um, I'm just so lucky to have them here. You know, a lot of people haven't got their partners over here and I've managed to have my wife and child, so I'm pretty lucky. Yeah, um, hopefully everyone can kind of see it, but um, for me, diversity, diversity and inclusion is is absolutely key in sport. And I guess, you know, a lot of companies during Pride Month just change a logo or, or have the odd comment here of support. But for me, um, this is every day. Um, I obviously don't get to bat a lot uh, in the Australian level, which is, which is great and I'm happy with that. But um, just even the conversations that sparked amongst my teammates um, shows the support that Kookaburra has for me and, and has for the LGBTQR community. And for me, it's a conversation that is ongoing and needs to be addressed kind of constantly. I mean, even this morning, I woke up to some comments to my photo on Twitter about Riley and the lifestyle I lead, I guess. And, and that kind of stuff is exactly why I, I want stickers that are inclusive on my bat because it's it's awareness and it's an ongoing conversation. So um, yeah, for me to have something that isn't just a, a change for a couple of weeks here and there, this is something that I want to have on my bat for a long time and, and continue to represent and, and that's my community. And I'm always happy to engage and have conversations about it because at the end of the day, that's that's what creates acceptance. And I guess that's what we're all after. I think I, I reflected on this question a little bit before the interview and it's the sponsors you don't hear about a lot that are generally doing the best work. And I mean, obviously we have our equipment and the cricket balls that we play with, but to have ongoing support behind it, um, even just contribution of gear and, and things like that, like that for me is the most important part. You can flash your, your, your brand on, you're advertising all you want on, on TV and, and the ball that you're bowling with, but if you're not actually helping individual players, then you're not actually doing much. So for me, for Kookaburra to always be there when I need them, I know that's the same for my teammates and, and a lot of other you know female cricketers across Australia and the world. That's genuinely what <laughs> we want, you know, that's, that's the true support and Kookaburra has been around for a long time and hopefully they're around for a long time to come. <laughs> uh, wish for a bit of swing. Nah, um, look, it's a batter's game and I, uh, I'll whinge about that till I die, I swear. But 
that's the challenge of it and I, I bloody love it. I, I think cricket is such a unique sport and there's more failures than success and if you are someone who is driven that is going to be the best sport for you. There's nothing better than being a bowler. You get six balls and over to do your thing, you're in charge um, and there's so much accountability on you as a player in terms of field settings and everything that comes with it. I mean I'm forever trying to find a new variation and yeah there's different shots batters can play but I think it's completely different when you're a bowler. You've I think you're in charge um, and that is the beauty of it and obviously being on flat wickets you've, you've got to adapt a lot and then obviously when conditions are in your favour you can't just expect it to happen you've still got to work for it so I think no matter what it is tough life being a, being a fast bowl well medium pace bowler um, but I think it's the most enjoyable one and I just enjoy the challenge and I think that a lot of kids feel the same and um, hopefully we have a lot more fast bowlers to come. This is where I'm probably a terrible example for this, but I purely, I hold the same grip for pretty much every variation because I believe in subtlety. So um, my stock ball, my fingers are down the same. My leg cutter, my fingers are down the same. And my back of the hand, they're down the same. I, I think that, you know, bat batters can watch it out the hand um, pretty well these days. It's what they're looking to do. And against those of us, medium pace bowler versus fast um subtlety is going to be more important so i believe if you can make your wrist work then that is what's going to do the damage so for me i'm obviously a little bit different with my release point how my wrist is when i bowl it's naturally cocked inwards so the leg cutter is a very easy variation for me um i just make sure that everyone always points at the index but i actually think it's your middle finger <laughs> that is the one that does the work off the ball so um for me that's the one i'm looking to feel with my leg cutter coming over the top and i think you really got to dig it in to get the grip out of it um for the back of the hand that one i'm also a little bit different with with how wide i come with a crease and my natural angle i can't get all the way around so it is actually semi sideways when i release the ball it actually makes for a bit of a leg spinner so on a pitch that's turning um the back of the hand will grip almost like a leg spinner and i guess that's where the ball coming away from the right hander is so successful for me so i guess my unique action has kind of helped me there but as I said, I think subtle variations are the ones that are key. And I think if we can hide everything as long as we can, um, that's the beauty of it. And occasionally I'll switch to uh, a cross seam and just try and get a bit more out the ball when they're on the flatter wickets, you know, when you're at Monica or Junction and you're not getting much in the air, um, we'll try and get off the wicket. But other than that, yeah, I don't believe you need to do too much. Sometimes the thumb position can be your subtle change of pace, just a little bit behind the ball taking off of it. But other than that, I think if you can work your wrist into the right positions, that's what you can do more damage with.